They're the small nutritious seeds to fulfill all your omega-3 needs. Flax, can you dig? From an ancient staple to a modern superfood, flax has been providing people with all sorts of wonderful things for thousands of years. People as diverse as the ancient Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Romans, and all sorts of other people have used it for everything from a foodstuff, to something to make clothing out of, to providing a fiber for making paper. Today, flax is prized for its rich endowment of alpha-linolenic acid, perhaps better known as omega-3 fatty acid. Research has shown that omega-3 fatty acids can play a huge role in promoting heart health, by reducing blood cholesterol, especially LDL or the bad cholesterol, lowering triglyceride levels, reducing blood pressure, and also helping interfere with the formation of plaque in the arteries. Flax is also a wonderful source of fiber, both soluble and insoluble. Soluble fiber is super good for your health because it helps to regulate blood cholesterol levels as well as blood sugar levels. Insoluble fiber is fiber that can't be digested, so it travels through your colon unchanged, cleaning house as it goes, which is super important for a healthy digestive system. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite recipes of all time, a super secret weapon that I love to bust out to impress people, my flax crackers. It's a really easy recipe, but it does require one special piece of equipment, a dehydrator. The best dehydrators in the world are perhaps made by the Excalibur Corporation, featuring such things as removable trays, adjustable thermostats, and wonderful fans. I, however, have this gem. I bought it for $3 at a garage sale. It's really a beef jerky making machine. For Tanya's flax crackers, you will need one cup flax seeds soaked in one and a half cups water, one half cup tomato, one half cup parsley, two tablespoons onion, one teaspoon garlic, salt and pepper to taste, and the optional quarter cup ground flax seeds. To make these babies, the first thing you're going to need to do is make sure that your flax seeds are soaking well in advance, at least a couple hours, and you can do them overnight. Um, ahead of time if you'd like to. You want to make sure that the flax seeds are starting to release all their wonderful soluble fibery goodness, which is this kind of like mucilage gum substance that's going to hold your flax crackers together. So when they're at this consistency, you're ready to go ahead and start your recipe. From here, we're just going to chop up the rest of our ingredients. First the garlic, making sure to cut it up really nice and small. Since everything is going to go in the food processor, it's going to get chopped up anyway, but I want to make the garlic nice and small because sometimes the blades will miss it and then you're going to run into a big honking garlic chunky in the middle of your cracker, and that's not everybody's cup of tea. Then you're going to chop up your onion, your tomato, and your parsley. I like to go ahead and chop up the parsley pretty fine too, just to disperse the little clean, beautiful flecks nice and evenly. Flectastic. Now, go ahead and put all your ingredients except for the flax seeds into your food processor. And pulse, pulse, pulse away until it's a nice soupy consistency. Once it looks like a fine salsa, you're ready to add your flax. Pulse it until it's all blended together and homogenized. Something you may want to consider is adding some ground flax meal to it. Ground flax meal is going to give you a harder, crunchier cracker versus a lighter, crispier cracker with the just straight flax seeds. Ground flax meal is also good because it's going to provide you with more accessible omega-3s and it's more easily digested. This is your cracker base. Now it's dehydrating time. Your dehydration system of choice should come with some kind of thin plastic sheet like this. What you're going to do is take your flax mixture and spread it as thinly and evenly as possible onto the sheet. You're then going to put them into your dehydrator to dry. We haven't really found a great way to spread the mixture onto the sheets, so it's just manual labor. If you have a great way, uh, please go ahead and drop us an email and share your insight with us. Your crackers are going to need to dehydrate about 24 hours. 
roughly six to eight hours into this process, once they've got a nice kind of firm, dryish crust on top, you're going to want to take them out of the dehydrator, put them face down onto a cutting board, and carefully peel away that plastic layer. You can use a knife to kind of coach them off and gently help them along. Once you've got them off of the sheets, you're going to take a nice sharp knife and cut them into in individual squares. Individually, they will be square. And then return them to the dehydrator for the rest of their time. Flex. And now, through the magic of video and the internet, we have a whole bunch of delicious finished crackers right here. As you can see, they have a beautiful, thin, crispy texture, lovely flecks of red, green, and gold, and I assure you, they taste absolutely stupendous. Try them with your favorite dip or just on their own for a wonderful snack. Another fun thing to do is put a little bit of raw marinara sauce and some little slices of olive on top for mini pizza sensations. There's a million ways to enjoy them, and it's a great way to include oh-so-important nutritious flax into your diet. Wow. Wow.